Hello, Max here. You know, a couple of weeks ago, Ian Parbury gave the students in his game math and physics class a problem that seemed to stump them. Let's take a closer look at it, shall we? The homework problem was this. Find me a rotation matrix that makes the positive x-axis point towards 1, 1, 1. Now, notice that this problem is underspecified. I've only specified one axis. The other two axes, axes can rotate about the x-axis. This gives us some freedom and enough rope to hang ourselves. But let's stay positive. As they say, turn every stumbling block into a stepping stone. What we'll do is choose one of the other axes in such a way that it makes life easier for us. So when you've got a choice, yeah, choose in such a way that it makes your life as easy as possible. In fact, finding information about two of the axes are easy. One is given. What I'm going to do is keep the z-axis in the old xz plane. And that way, the z-axis will point towards the point minus 1, 0, 1. Now, we already know that the x-axis points towards this point, p sub x equals 1, 1, 1, which is in the direction of the vector px. Notice the bold face here, meaning a vector, equals 1, 1, 1. Now, we're given that. I've just told you that I'm choosing the z-axis to point it towards the point pz equals minus 1, 0, 1. And that's in the direction of vector pz equals minus 1, 0, 1. I've chosen it now. Yeah, but where did I get that minus 1, 0, 1 thing from? Hmm. Here I've got a cube, let's say it has side 2, with the origin at the center. So in the y direction, for example, it goes all the way up to plus 1 and all the way down to minus 1. So remember we're in a left-handed coordinate system. This back point is 1, 1, 1. This front left point over here is minus 1, minus 1, minus 1. Now, I've put the axes in in their rotated form. So notice the x-axis now points through 1, 1, 1, as we expected. Now, we could rotate this axis system around the x-axis and get a good enough answer for the problem. That's all I asked for. It was underspecified. Let's twirl around the x-axis so that the uh, z-axis remains in the old xz plane. So it, um, where does it point? The plus z points in the back here. That's, uh, well, the y value is definitely 0 because it's flat. And in the x direction, it's negative, And in the z direction, it's in the back. It's negative. So it looks like it's pointing towards, uh, sorry, I got that wrong. Z-axis is positive 1. So it looks like it's towards minus 1, 0, 1. Can't get my hands straight here. Let's rotate this quickly so you can get a look at what's going on here. X and Z, look at the plane as it passes by you. Neat. Now, the y-axis in this picture points up with someplace strange, but it does eventually uh, meet that line that's going up from the point minus 1, minus 1, minus 1 vertically, if we extend that edge of the cube. Here it is coming around now. If we extend this edge here vertically, it will eventually hit that new uh, y-axis. Alright, let's stop it. Now, as I said, two axes are easy. We make the z-axis point towards minus 1, 0, 1. 
Now we've got those two vectors. Let's normalize them. Normalize px and pz. So over on um, your left here, I'm normalizing p sub x, the vector p sub x. Notice when I've normalized it, I put a hat on it. That's a nice convention. Put a hat over a vector when it's normalized. It has unit length. So we take the vector px, divide by the norm of px. That's line 1. So px is 1, 1, 1 divided by the norm of 1, 1, 1. The norm of 1, 1, 1 is the square root of 1 squared plus 1 squared plus 1 squared, which is the square root of 3. So that's 1, 1, 1 over the square root of 3. And of course, to multiply a vector by a scalar, we simply multiply all of the components by the scalar. And we get 1 over root 3, 1 over root 3, 1 over root 3. To normalize pz, same process, um, but the norm here is minus 1 squared plus 0 squared plus 1 squared, which is square root of 2. So we end up with this, minus 1 over the square root of 2, 0, 1 over the square root of 2. Now we're cooking with gas. Remember that once I've got these vectors, I treat them as the row of a matrix, just jam them into the rows of a matrix, and I've got the uh, rotation matrix that I'm looking for. Ah, cool. Well, I'm still missing py hat. So what about the y-axis then? It appeared from before to point off to a weird point in space. Actually, it points towards minus 1, 2, 1, which is not so weird. But how did I figure that out? Okay, let's suppose the y-axis points towards some point uh, p sub y equals x, y, z. That is in the direction of vector p, y equals x, y, z. Okay, let's solve for x, y. And z. Now there are two ways to do this, either algebraically or geometrically. Now remember this Descartes guy, the I think the 4am guy, he figured out that algebra and geometry were really the same thing, but some people think better in algebra than they do in geometry, and some others think better in geometry than they do in algebra. So I'm going to show you both ways, just in case. So method one. Algebra. Now, we want px, py, and pz to be um, basis vectors for a coordinate space, so they need to be orthogonal. Well, they were orthogonal in our picture. So this is, we want, in particular, p dot p sub y dot p sub z equals zero. Right, the dot product of orthogonal vectors is zero. What is p y dot p z? It's x, y, z dot minus 1, 0, 1, so that's minus 1 times x plus 0 times y plus 1 times z, which is z minus x. So we want that z minus x to be 0. Okay, that means x has to be equal to z. That is, for some f positive real number f, we want p sub y to be minus f y minus f. Uh, hang on a second. What's going on here? Where, what, where did this minus come from? Positive real number f with a minus sign here. Um, turns out I could make this work if I didn't have the minus sign here, and I'd end up actually with a right-handed coordinate space instead of a left-handed one. Duh. But I put the minus in because when I looked at that cube picture before, I noticed that p y pointed off in the minus zero minus direction, okay, towards the back corner there. So that's how I figured this out. If I get it wrong, I'm just going to get a weird coordinate space. All right, so step two. We know that this new py, whatever it is, its dot product with px has to be equal to zero too. It's orthogonal to the ax new x-axis. So px dot py is, well, px is one, 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 py so far we know it's minus f y minus f so the dot product is oh yeah minus f plus y plus minus f which is minus 2f plus y okay so minus 2f plus y equals 0 therefore y equals 2f and py is minus f 2f minus f for some value of f well any value of f will do we'll pick the one that's most convenient for us um, now we need to normalize py, so we need to divide py by its 
norm by its magnitude. The magnitude of Py up top here is magnitude of minus f, 2f minus f, which is the square root of minus f squared, which is f squared, plus 2f all squared, 4f squared, plus f squared, which is square root of 6f squared, which is the square root of 6 times the square root of f squared. Square root of f squared is f, so f root 6. Therefore, Py hat, the normalized version of Py, is Py divided by f times the square root of 6. So the f's cancel out, and I'm left with minus 1 over root 6, 2 over root 6, minus 1 over root 6. Isn't that cool? So I'm done if I use algebra. That is Py hat, and I can use that to make the rotation matrix. But what if you're the kind of person who prefers to see things geometrically? Now, notice that the y-axis is in that vertical plane that runs diagonally through the origin and the point 1, 1, 1, oh, and minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, 2. That is, it's in the plane x equals z. Okay, so suppose the y-axis points towards a point uh, minus 1, y, minus 1 in the direction of vector py equals minus 1, y, minus 1. Here's our cube again. Yes, we've got the um, y-vector in that plane passing from uh, it's a vertical plane passing through 1, 1, 1, minus 1, minus 1, minus 1. Let me draw it in for you. This plane here. Now, uh, notice this side has height 2. So we've got two parts of height 1. What about the top length? That's uh, a diagonal of this cube. The cube has side 2. So by the Pythagorean theorem, the uh, diagonal size is the square root of 2 squared plus 2 squared, square root of 8, which is square root of 4 times square root of 2, 2 root 2. Okay, here we have 1, 2 times root, square root of 2. Each of those half segments has length square root of 2. All right, um, let's rotate that quickly so you get the idea that this is indeed a plane passing through that diagonal, passing through... Um, the y-axis and the x-axis. And I, what I'm going to do is draw a picture with just the positive and, uh, sorry, the positive y and the positive x-axis and that plane there. And I'll put it on the slides behind us in just a second. Let's rotate just a little more until it comes back into place. Um, okay. So here we have in the back, you can see very faintly behind this cube a picture of that plane. All right, let's look closely. So we want to figure out where the y-axis hits that uh, extension of that side of the cube. And we'll call that distance y. So we want to compute y. Consider the angle theta that the um, x-axis makes with the side of the cube here. So theta is right there in pink. Now we know tan theta equals square root of 2. Remember Soka Toa. Uh, toa tangent is opposite over adjacent. Opposite has length square root of 2. Adjacent has length 1. Remember that top line, top horizontal line here is the diagonal of the cube which has um, total width twice the square root of 2. So that little bit here is root 2. This is 1. Okay, so we know tan theta. Um, using similar triangles, we can figure out that if that angle is theta, okay, that bottom angle down here has to be 90 minus theta because the sum of the angles of a triangle is 180 degrees. Yeah. Theta plus 90 minus theta plus 90 is 180. Cool. Um, over there in the second triangle, the gray triangle, that angle I've put a theta, green theta on, yeah, that must be theta because the sum of the angles on a, a line sum to 182, so 90 minus theta plus 90 plus that green theta over there, yeah, that's 180 degrees. So I know that's theta over there, too. Um, 
computing the tangent of theta over there in that gray triangle, tan of theta is opposite over adjacent, y over square root of 2. Hmm. So I've got two values for tan theta. They must be the same. So tan theta is square root of 2. Tan theta is also y divided by the square root of 2. So um, square root of 2 from the top line must equal y over square root of 2 from the second line. Solve for y. That means y equals 2. Ah, good. That gives us a vector for py. So py is, as I said, minus 1, 2. We just found the 2 minus 1. Its norm is square root of 6. So py hat, the normalized version, is minus 1 over root 6, 2 over root 6, minus 1 over root 6, which is the same answer that we got when we used algebra. Fortuitously, it means I didn't make a mistake. Of course, it's going to be the same. Now we're done. Whichever way you got py hat and oh, there are other ways too, like take the cross product, but that's kind of like killing a fly with a howitzer. Uh, we take px hat, py hat, pz hat, use them as the rows of a matrix. Remember, this is the notation we're using, and we get this matrix. So first row is px hat, second row is py hat, third row is pz hat, and that is the rotation matrix we were looking for. Thank you. Bye-bye.